Hey, race fans, Alex Weaver here, and we're going to welcome in our resident championship winning crew chief, Cole Pern, to break down all the action from Charlotte because we saw a Thursday night race that had a ton of storylines. Cole, how did you feel about the shorter race? Oh, you got to be good off the truck. I think that's the key. Uh, you know, short race, not a lot of pit stops, not a lot of time to adjust. So I think the guys that unloaded and started the race good, stayed strong, and that's going to be the key as we move forward with these weekday races. What we were thinking may have possibly been an 88 win for Alex Bowman. What happened with him? Because was he just driving too hard and tried to do too much at the wrong time? Yes, but they're doing that constantly. I don't think you can uh, take away from the fact of how on edge these guys are trying to make lap time, especially when you're trying to stay wide open. Um, you got to sometimes push through the limit a little bit much, and that's what happened to him. You know, he crossed over the slip limit of the tires, and bam, you're in the wall, and, and your night's over. down the slope in honor of you being up there in the snow in Canada. And I want you to flash back to uh, the 2016 season for the 78 team with Martin Truex Jr. You guys struggled and had some endings like the nine team has had so far in 2020. And you came back and you were dominant in the Coca-Cola 600 to really uh, put that nail in the coffin of those bad luck trends. So how can you compare what 2016 looked like for the 78 versus what 2020 looked like for the nine? Oh, it's, it's similar. Yeah. The, the taste of victory, once it's in, in your mouth and you come so close and then you have those things happen to you, just like the nine has had happen. I mean, you just go back to the shop. That's all you're thinking about. It, you're locked in. You just want to get over the hump. You know, the closer you get, the more that the more you want it. And I think that's what you saw with those guys. They just uh, stayed focused and credit to them. They got the job done was set up for what looked like a little bit of a shorter run than the nine car was. The nine was really uh, spaced out for those long runs, but was it a risk for Harvick to set up in that four team with Rodney Childers to set up for those short run uh, green flags? I think that was the most interesting part of the race. Uh, you know, the four car looked like they went more the long run route for the 600 and kind of struggled, didn't really have the speed that they're used to having. They flip the switch, go more the short run route for uh, what you think would be a shorter race. Um, but then you end up with a, a super long run at the end of it. And the guys that are good on the long run end up coming out on top. So that's the risk versus reward you replay. You know, you think, are you going to have short runs? Are you going to have long runs? And you make your bet. And, you know, if the four had had 30 lap runs, they were going to be in good shape and probably would have won the race. Do you think that you can kind of attribute that to just the races being shorter? Or is it just teams kind of trying stuff out because we are in such a different routine right now? I think for them with Stuart Haas, that's kind of been their development route. They've, you know, we've seen the last year with this package, they've been qualifying up front, showing a ton of speed early on, and then not really having the long run uh, pace as some other teams. So for them to go a different route, you know, for the 600 and then not really run that well, I think uh, they just wanted to go back what, what had been working for them. And, and uh, it was close. I mean, he was super fast. It just uh, didn't play out. Well, something that works in our favor is now instead of getting you atop the pit box, we get you on social media, particularly a Twitter, which you are you are really good on Twitter when it's in the middle of a race and you get to give your opinion. So I want to talk to you about the one that you said with Chad Ganaus in that 2014, because uh, it wasn't long in the start of that race before we saw some damage on that right side coming in for that two tire stop. Yeah, two tires early um, at a place where everyone's going to be on the lead lap. You get those early comp cautions where you know, you haven't had a chance to put anybody lap down and you're going to do a right side tire stop in six seconds or so. And then boom, you're pulling out um, into oncoming traffic. Uh, it happens so much when you get T-boned early in those races. And it's and it's hard because you you want to do the two tires to be fast, but you got to be super patient getting out of the box. And you sometimes give up uh, the time that you gain from from the shorter stop. But if it saves you from getting wrecked, it's, uh, it's key. So definitely a, a tricky thing being on the back half of the pit road. I hope that we can trademark or get it on some t-shirts or something raging out and quote you on that because that's my that's my new favorite mood is we're just going to rage out and the guy who was raging out afterwards and who doesn't like squirrels was Kyle Bush. He also was very vocal on Twitter following the truck race and then he was even more vocal following the Cup Series race where the 18 struggled. So what do you think about uh, KB18 on, on the Twitter? Yeah, I guess he's just uh, feeling you know, the distance of the COVID times, he just needs to rage out at somebody and the, <laughs> the internet gets to, gets to hear it. So, yeah, I think uh, he's just frustrated being in a bad spot early in the race and wants to put blame on everyone else, but that's fine. You know, uh, 
I think credit to him. He did a great job getting back to pit road. I thought that was awesome. So many guys uh, spin out, but then he's got to take to Twitter and sell his mad driving skills. So uh, typical Kyle, he definitely does it its own way. We are going to Bristol next up. We're racing there on Sunday in the Cup Series. And uh, that is known as Cal Bush and the Bush Brothers land. So can they be dominant? And also, with that track being super green when we get going, there's been no series on there. We know that it's going to be slick at the last great Coliseum. Man, I, I'm loving the no practice, no qualifying deal. But uh, this weekend, oh, boy, it's going to be tight. Um, I think, uh, you know, that PJ1 that's on the bottom is has no grip when it's cold then the wall is going to be perfectly clean because there's been no racing on it, you know, leading into this one. So the track's going to be super narrow getting going. I think uh, early race uh, wrecks on starts are going to be pretty common. I, I think even about the iRacing race that was there, they had to go to single file, single file restarts just to keep everybody from wrecking. So I think survival is going to be the key uh, early on in this one. We're going to close out the month of May up in the East Tennessee mountains at Bristol Motor Speedway. Tune into that. Cole, thank you so much for joining us uh, and be sure and watch all that action. It's Bristol Baby coming up Sunday at 3.30 p.m. on FS1.